artist is shedding light on a different perspective at the Vietnam War, and he's doing it through a new art exhibit at the Minneapolis Art Institute. It's one through the lens of a Vietnamese American reflecting on what happened to his home country, and it's one this painting piece through some iconic photographs that were taken during the war's decades of bloodshed. Our Pauline Lee takes us behind the paintbrush. Most people think of Vietnam as a war, but not a country or a people. If a photograph is worth a thousand words. I'm hoping that we somehow can look at all these things in the past and, and learn from it. Artist Taewin says there's still a lot we haven't put into words about the second longest war in U.S. history. There's a lot more to Vietnam that people don't know. There's so much more that people don't know. But this exhibit inside the Minneapolis Art Institute paints a good picture of where to start. There are certain things about art that evokes different feelings. As we're sitting here and we're talking, I've noticed that you keep looking at your artwork. What do you see? You know, there's so much about, you know, on these paintings that I'd like people to see. Photographs taken during the war are a painful reminder of the cost, the destruction, families torn apart, the countless lives lost. Absolutely. But a lover of landscapes himself, Teo hopes people will take a look at the landscapes behind some of the war's most iconic images that he recreated to find peace within his paint strokes. I'm taking all of the weapons, the people, and the dead bodies out of these because I really want to focus on the cultural and spiritual aspects of uh, Vietnam and its people. He was born in Vietnam's Cameron Bay, a child of war, even if he was born two years after the fall of Saigon, which in American history marks the end of combat. Growing up in Vietnam, I feared of bombs and chemicals that fell from the sky. Like many Vietnamese children who uh, family members were killed. I never met my grandparents, uh, my aunts and uncle. War didn't end once the bombing and firing stops. You know, the, the devastations of war uh, are long lasting, even if, uh, you know, the rest of the world forgets. He immigrated to the United States at just 16 years old and fell in love with the power art has to move people. Yes. For years, he's longed to put together an exhibit that pays tribute to the Vietnamese people. I feel that the Vietnamese experience and perspective have been left out in all the conversations. One that honors those whose lives are forever frozen in these moments of time. This is my way of memorializing the lives that I believe that is still in these landscapes and one that offers the chance for people, both American and Vietnamese, to make peace with the past. So how can we heal? How can we reconcile uh, if we're not talking about the other side? That is the inspiration behind his exhibit more than six years in the making, Vietnam Peace Project, Giấc Mơ Hòa Bình, A Dream for Peace. contains nearly 40 pieces, many of them images repainted in reference to the original, and the narrative reframed both in English and in Vietnamese. Among the collection is the 1968 execution of a Viet Cong officer on the streets of Saigon. This image is iconic, but you took the people off of it. Yeah. But yet you still called it you are me, I am you, Zhang Tai Yao. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's the dehumanity aspects of it that I want to talk about. You know, when you experience death, you know, part of you die with that person. And then there's the image that many credit with ending the war. Kim Phuc, she was nine running down the road when she was hit by napalm. She's the napalm girl. She's the napalm girl. In taking Kim Phuc out of this image, what do you hope people will see? For me, I hope people look at Vietnam in a different light. We have these cultural and spiritual aspects of it that I would like people to uh, get to know and to learn. Some pieces hang in the balance, 
between what happened and the impacts still not fully known today, like the 14-foot installation representing the nine years the deadly chemical Agent Orange was dropped in Vietnam. We don't see it, but it's in the land, it's in the water, and people are still dying from it, including uh, veterans, Americans. Other pieces simply speak volumes. There are 60 stacks of uh, paper here on the gallery floor and one stacks with the number 58220, which is the number of Americans that died in Vietnam. All of the other ones are all of the Vietnamese people who were killed. Yes. Stacks upon stacks to symbolize the estimated 3.5 million Vietnamese people killed during the war, all left blank because many are still unaccounted for. Now the point is not to pin one side against the other. This installation is about bringing in, you know, the other side and be able to come together. To come together, to learn yes. from our past, and to pave a peaceful way forward. So the lotus is the Vietnam national flowers, but also it represents optimism. Are you hopeful? I am very hopeful for the future. A future painted with compassion and understanding for the whole picture. Because once the bombs are dropped and you know millions of people have been killed, then that is too late. So what can we look at the past and understand what, what we're doing now? Because what we are doing now is really important. <laughs> Stunning artwork there. That was our Pauline Lee reporting. The Vietnam Peace Project is on display at the Minneapolis Art Institute now until next June.